Hello, this is our third out of three videos about CSS Flexbox. And in this one, we're going to watch how things grow and shrink in a Flexbox container. And the things are these SVG images. So I've used SVG. Um, right, so I've got 10 SVG images, not ping and not JPEG, because since they are pure code and vector, they scale beautifully. They don't get blurry. They don't look indistinct. So that's why I've chosen to use SVG images. And you can see they're all quite small. Um, the largest one is 7 kilobytes, so not very bad. Um, I got these from a free icon place. And what you're going to see as I move the page is these images are going to actually shrink beautifully. And the relative spacing between them remains the same. I'm going to take it all the way down. That's as small as it goes, right? So um, not that you would necessarily want your icons to be this small, but you will see that they shrink and grow really beautifully and they don't fall down to another line because I haven't used wrap. Um, so the default is no wrap. So let's look at the HTML and the CSS so that you can understand how this works. So here's the HTML. And what I've got here is three containers that are set up identically. And they all have, of course, the same 10 images inside them. Um, it's pretty simple. It's a container, which is a div. It could be a section or an article or something else. Um, but it's a div. It has a distinct ID because each of my containers has different properties. Um, but the 10 images are the same in the same order in every container. So the first container has an ID of container 1. The second container has an ID of container 2. And the third container has an ID of container 3. So you've seen them in the HTML. You've got uh, 1 at the top, 2 in the middle, 3 at the bottom. And you can also see by the border around them that the height of each flex container is different. And if I went into my CSS and I removed the border on the div, save and reload, the border doesn't have to be there. It works the same, but I put a border on it so that you could see the actual height of each div. So I'm going to put the border back on. So each container is a div, and these styles are applied to each one of the three containers identically, right? So they've all got a display of flex. They've all got justify content flex start. And they've all got the same border, and they've all got the same margin. Nothing that exciting except for they are each a flex container because they say display flex. Then the only thing I've done uh, for each of the IDs that differentiates the three containers is I've given each one a different height. And that's why you saw the border a moment ago. That's why I put the border on so that you can really see that the first one has a height applied to it of 50 pixels. The second one has a height applied to it of 100 pixels, and the third has a height of 200 pixels. And this is important uh, when you want things to grow and shrink. With Flexbox, often you have to give the containing element a height. It depends, but if you want them to grow um, and shrink consistently and nicely, and it doesn't always work if you do not have a fixed height. And the height cannot be a percent. You have to use uh, either rems or ems or pixels, something that won't be changing with the size of the browser window or the device. The other thing we have to note is that for the flex items, which are images, they're not in any kind of container. Remember, you saw that in the HTML. They're just bare images out in the wild, not, not wrapped up in any other element. 
And because they are SVGs, they've got to have a width on them. Now I have a really tiny width, but they've got to have some fixed width on them or else they don't show up. And I'll show you that um, if I cut that out and save and reload, they end up being, they don't fit in the box. There's something about the way they shrink and grow. Um, they're just not going to work. If you put a very small measurement on them, then they will stay within the box. Um, padding is the space between them. If I took that off, uh, they're going to smash up and smash together, right? So we put that back. And the flex property that controls whether they can grow, whether they can shrink, and the flex basis, as I've said, there's a lot of combinations here, but if you want things to grow, you make the first number one. If you want them to shrink, you make the, first, the second number one. And there are a number of options for the third value, uh, one of which is zero. Um, you can also put in precise pixel measurements or rems or ems. Um, but I found that for this particular arrangement, auto really works best. So it's going to automatically scale. So save and reload again. Really, that's all I wanted you to know. Remember, they're not going to wrap because the default is no wrap. If I wanted them to wrap, I could put a flex direction on the container. But if I want them to stay in a single row, then I don't need to have a flex direction on any of my selectors that affect the containers. So this concludes uh, the third video out of three about Flexbox in CSS. Um, you'll need to experiment with it. Every situation is different, but the key is don't use too many properties. Keep in mind what is your container and what are the items inside it. Do any of the items have to be a container? If not, don't make them a container and make sure you apply the flex CSS properties in the correct selector. So container properties in the container and item properties in the item. And you'll be able to have a lot of control over your designs using the flex CSS properties.